Hi everyone, Vegas Film Critic here, Jeffrey K. Howard, with a commentary uh, about Adam Sandler and Pixels. Uh, you know, Pixels got really horrible reviews. Uh, I was mixed on it, you know, but overall I was, you know, in the middle with it. Uh, but there were some really vile, hateful reviews online, and uh, some of it was just... It was shocking. It really was. Uh, you know, people need to remember it's a movie, you know. And this hatred for Adam Sandler lately and just pouncing on him and dogpiling him, I just don't understand why, you know. What, people have lives or they live to trash people like that? Yeah, sure, there's really bad movies, but be constructive, you know. Be, uh, you know, don't forget that, you know, all those people that go by on the end credits... You know, there are th hundreds and thousands of people make movies, and I, s I swear, they don't sit down their first day and go, let's make the worst movie we possibly can. So, that's why I kind of tread a, a fine line sometimes when I don't like a film. Sometimes when I really don't like a film, you know, you got to be considerate, too. You know, Roger Ebert, you know, God bless him, my hero, he wrote that, uh, uh, what was the one, <laughs> that one critique he said was they should cut up this film and use it as banjo picks. You know, so sometimes, you know, even he can get really uh, mean. And he even published that book. I have it here somewhere. Um, I hated, 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 hated this movie. Have you read that book? A collection of all the reviews. And he has some really, it could be really almost comical to say that. But you got to remember, you know, uh, if you do it in a respectful manner, people will respect you, especially if you're a professional critic. So I was seeing Mission Impossible Rogue Nation the other night, and uh, sitting in front of me was comedian Louis Anderson. He lives here in Las Vegas, and he performs all over town. And uh, I was speaking about this. I said, I go, Louis, what in the world is going on with this hatred of, of Adam Sandler and, and Pixels, too? And, he's, and he loved Pixels. He loved Pixels. But he said to me, you know what? He goes, Jeff, you should go online. You should you should do, say something nice about Adam. You should get online and, and say something about that. So he inspired me to do this commentary on Adam Sandler. And not only him, but also uh, in Variety, there was a great article. And uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Raymond Setu, S-E-T-O-O-D-E-H. He wrote a, uh, an article, Five Reasons Why Adam Sandler is No Longer a Movie Star. Which I... That's such a you know, uh, a bold statement, but he gave some pretty good reasons, and uh, I just want to go over them with you and uh, and uh, see where we can help Adam Sandler. Now, Pixels opened at $24 million, and the movie cost about 90 to $100 million, so, yeah, that's pretty disappointing, and if you look at his other films, like Jack and Jill, and, and uh, I, you know, I love Blended. I'm just one of those guys that I remember just laughing a lot during Blended. I thought it was a wonderful family comedy. I'm one of the few, but, of course, that tank, too, so... Uh, the first thing that, that Adam Sandler needs to realize is that he's aged out of his material. As he's aged, he's 48 now, uh, we've all aged with him, so you've, he's got to learn to act his age. Is that probably? Because when you see those kind of antics over and over, even though you have won a little bit of that Adam Sandler, that flair, but you just kind of think, well, wait a minute, we're almost you know 50 years old now. It's like you need to find yourself. And it happened with Eddie Murphy, too. It happened with all comedians. Eddie Murphy was Beverly Hills Cop, and he was uh, trading places, and he was this hot, young, brash comedian. But then he started doing Dr. Doolittle. He's a family man, much like Adam Sandler. So that's why I think he tried with Blended with Drew Barrymore. He tried to do something that was family-oriented, but uh, he needs to find himself something for his own age. Second reason that he's no longer a movie star is he's not edgy anymore. You know, where is that cutting edge feeling that we had with Adam Sandler in the early days? If you watch him, especially with Pixels, he just almost phones in the performance. He's like this low-key kind of talk, and he's like this all the time. Where is that, that craziness? Where doesn't he take risks? You know, like Punch Drunk Love. Oh, I think not only is that one of my favorite films, I think that's his best performance. I mean, I just love Punch Drunk Love. He needs to take more chances. He needs to get, he needs to get edgy. Reason number three, he needs new friends. And by meaning that, he keeps using the same actors over and over, which a lot of directors do, a lot of a lot of producers, you know, you got uh, Martin Scorsese, and you've got so many uh, uh, troops, you know, that they bring in, but they do different kinds of, of films. He keeps doing the same kind of comedies, which makes you think you're watching the same film over and over and over. Uh, Kevin James, David Spade, Norm MacDonald, Chris Rock. It's, he needs to kind of mix up his troops a little bit. And uh, so we don't keep thinking that we're watching the same movie over and over. You know, he needs to branch out. I'm sure there's other comedians dying to work with you, Adam. Uh, number four, and I have personal experience with this, uh, Adam Sandler doesn't care for the press. He kind of hates the press, especially print journalists. And 
I've interviewed Adam a couple times. I think it was for Spanglish, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, I interviewed for uh, Little Nicky uh, and a couple other films. And I'm television radio, and but print were not allowed. And and the the uh, urban legend is that he has a dossier. He has a, a folder of all the print journalists that have trashed his movies, and he will not talk to anyone that's written a bad review about him. So. That's something he has to, I don't think he's ever going to overcome, because that's, I've heard that for the last 10 or 15 years, that he hates the press. So, But I'm telling you, every time I've interviewed him and I've met him, he thinks I look like his roommate or a really good friend of his when I first met him. He was like, oh, doesn't he look like so-and-so? And, and I was kind of flattered by that, but I've never had a bad experience with Adam Sandler. In fact, I'm a big fan. And then finally, the last reason, uh, a lot of people think he's just kind of given up, like he doesn't even want to try anymore, but I don't think that's right. I think that everyone hits a slump, and I think that he needs to reinvent himself and, and find something different. And, and uh, what's his movie coming out this fall? Uh, it's called uh, The Ridiculous Six. He's already getting bad publicity from Native Americans, and, you know, was that intentional? Because, you know, to kind of steer away the press from, uh, from pixels? Who knows? But I think we need to really step back and take a breath and remember why we love Adam Sandler, okay? And remember that he's only human, that you know people make bad decisions, whether you be a musician, whether you be an author, it's that sometimes people stumble and fall, okay? And so let's just not say these really hateful things about him. And if you didn't like Pixels, fine. You, don't, you didn't like Pixels. But you know what? Nobody sets out to make a bad movie. Nobody uh, wants to be hated like that. And it's just, it's really, come on, give him some love, be constructive. And remember the old adage, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Well, unless you're a film critic.